Hi, welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, welcome. My name is Ami. I am a nurse practitioner. On this channel, I make videos about nursing. I talk about mental health. I make do hair tutorial videos and I also document my journey to financial freedom and share some financial tips that have helped me throughout the way. And if these are topics that you're interested in, please make sure you subscribe and join the family. So a majority of the things that I talk about on this channel, and because I am a mental health uh, nurse practitioner, so I talk a lot, about, a, a lot about mental health in general. So today I wanted to share with you guys uh, some things that I've been through over the years, and sometimes I still experience these things. And I hope that someone is able to relate some, for, on some of these obstacles that I've really, sometimes they are really, really hard to overcome and sometimes it's just one of those things where you just gotta keep it going so a lot of these examples that i'm going to share with you guys today have to do with um nursing and some of these things again can be applied to people that are not nurses as well but it just happened to be that a lot of my obstacles just really evolves around my professional life honestly guys and so for me, a lot of these things started back like way in high school, but it's going to be a different story in terms of high school because I went through a lot of things in high school. So if you don't know, I am an immigrant. So I came from West Africa, Sierra Leone, and I came to the United States back in 2004. So and, and for me, it's like coming to the United States was like I was super excited, you know, um, about all these opportunities. And little did I know that it's not all bread and butter, like there's always obstacles, okay? And for me, I remember one of the most challenging things that I, when I started um, schooling in the United States was um, in high school. I remember one of the hardest things was in school in high school, because in, in, in Sierra Leone, we speak, uh, the general language is Creole. It's different from the Haitian Creole, guys. But as we speak Creole, and then we have also our native languages, like I speak Timini as well. So for me, coming to the United States, English was a big ob obstacle for me. So I remember when I was in high school, I wouldn't really answer questions because I was afraid of pronouncing things the wrong way. And I still do, by the way. <laughs> I still pronounce things wrong a lot and I spell things wrong a lot. That's just one of my strong points, <laughs> negative points. Um, but I remember I wouldn't answer questions in class with the exception of math because I really love math that's probably why I love math because you really can't pronounce numbers wrong for the most part it's like one two three four you know so a lot of the time in class with math class I will answer questions but in terms of like other classes I really wouldn't answer questions just because I was afraid that I would pronounce things wrong and this really became a problem when I started nursing school. So my first clinical uh, in, 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 in nursing, when I was in nursing school, I remember I was always very quiet and wouldn't really answer a lot of questions. And it's not because I didn't know the answers to the questions, but it was because I was afraid that I, was, I will pronounce something wrong. And I remember my first clinical instructor. So when you are done with your clinicals, at the end of the clinical rotation, you usually go through an evaluation. And in that evaluation, the teacher usually write your strong points and your weakest points or whatever. And I remember that teacher specifically wrote on my paper that day that she did not think that I will get, through, I will be successful in the nursing program just because I really didn't answer. I don't talk much. Like I'm not very, um, I don't answer a lot of questions. So if she asked me a question directly, I will answer it. But if we're just having a discussion, I was always very quiet. And I remember for me, that was that really, really messed with me a little bit because I remember I was like, OK, doubting myself with uh, being in that nursing program because I felt just, Joe, if this teacher is saying that I can't make it through this, maybe she is right. And I remember that really messed with me for a long time. Um, going through the nursing program and looking back now like having my doctorate in nursing and going back to school and getting a second degree and i'm like that teacher was definitely wrong and these are things that people go through a lot where you have some people tell you things uh and and these are people that barely even know you they don't know your background they don't know things that you've been through that you continue to struggle with but based on like that limited time that they spend with you they feel as though they can pretty much tell you how your life is gonna turn out 
And so for me, that's a big thing. So if you are someone that's experiencing that where you are having people doubt, telling you things to make you doubt yourself, I am a living testimony to that, that what people say to you, especially negative things, don't go off of that. Just believe in yourself and who you are as an individual and be willing to put in the work. You will definitely be just fine. And I remember another thing in, in nursing school that I struggle with as well is I remember there was a particular assignment that we had to do as a group work. And this uh, one of my um, classmates that was supposed to be my partner, and this was a big project. And I remember this girl pretty much saying that she didn't want to work with me and she wouldn't say why. Well, undergrad, and, and I'm not trying to play the race game or anything like that, because I in, in America, I know that there's definitely racism that's going on. And some people that just don't like you because of the color of your skin. And God forbid, for me, it's like not only the color of my skin, and now I have an accent. So it's like those are two things that I really had to uh, try to figure out a way to overcome. And again, these are things that I, so every now and so you go through that, you know, those are things that you as as and sometimes it may not have to do with your race or the color of your skin at all it's just people just don't like you you know that's just the reality of things and i remember this particular kid when i was in in, in undergrad for my nursing she just did not want to work with me and i remember i was so frustrated because it's like it was a big project that we had to work together it was a community project that we had to work together and you know when you work in group you can divide up the you know the work so it's less work for you and nursing school is already intense as it is so if you're able to work in group that's like the best because you get to share the work for the most part it's usually positive you get to share the work but i remember this particular kid did not want to work with me the, and i honestly believe at that time it was because of because i was black to be honest with you, because there was no other reason. And she was white, of course. And I didn't really see any other reason why she wouldn't want to work with me. And I remember talking to the instructor to see if I can work with another student. And I was left to do that work by myself. And then later on, I found out that that, that, um, that student ended up with working with another group. And I worked by myself for that project. And fast forward, and I became a nurse. And I remember my first job as a registered nurse was in Philadelphia and I worked in a trauma unit. And I remember there was this particular nurse that made sure that she was so hard on me in terms of like, when that given report wise, and she was like, well, why wouldn't you do this? Why didn't you do that? This and then the third. And I remember being a brand new nurse. It's like, it's real in, 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 in that particular place where I work, where they said nurses eat their young. It was really real for me. It's one of those things where I was like, getting out of once i was done with orientation i think it was about three months or so for orientation at that time i was a charge nurse like they used to rotate and i remember those nurses made it so difficult for me not all of them most of them did where they put you as a charge nurse knowing that you are a brand new nurse barely knowing anything and i always used to have this anxiety about calling doctors because uh, some of the doctors were not really good at you know they're kind of rude to be honest with you where you're calling them about things and at that time I work overnight so you're calling them about things and they make it very difficult for you for me with that experience when it comes to dealing with those nurses who felt as though by making me a charge nurse a brand new nurse or by giving me a hard time when I'm giving report I turned it into a positive thing where I made sure that I had my ducks in a row. Like it was like when, and that's my thing too. When someone tried to make me look stupid, I figure out a different angle. How can I use this to my advantage? So for me, it was like reading my, and it took a lot of time, especially in the eight hour period where you were busy. Sometimes you don't have time to go back and read multiple notes to get a full picture of what's going on. So knowing that whenever I knew that it was this one particular nurse that I know that I have to give a report in the morning, I I made sure that I have all my ducks in a row, have all the questions answered, and I use that to my advantage to the point where throughout my nursing career, when I was working as a bedside nurse, I use that as a driving force where I will literally give people report and they have no questions. Like by the time I'm done giving you report about what's going on with my patient, usually I'll ask, do you have any questions? No, nope, I'm good. Like they have enough information to be able to take care of that patient. And that came from an experience that was a very negative experience for me. And I was able to turn that into a positive. So that's one thing. Another thing that I went through was that when I was doing my doctorate program, one of it has to do with 
my dissertation. So when I tell you I do struggle with writing papers, again, part of that has to do with English being my third language. So it's always been a struggle. But I remember specifically um, a lot of, and I, and I went to a school where I was the only black person there, to be honest. I was the only black student there. And I remember a couple of my um, classmates like all of them, their dissertation, everything was going smoothly. Like, so with the dissertation part of it, you have to work with an organization or a hospital or a clinic or something to do a practice improvement project. So for me, I had a lot of roadblocks, guys. When I tell you, and some of these places were, were places where other students were doing their, their dissertations as well, but they didn't have any obstacles. Mine was just like, you need this, you need that. There was so many things that made it so difficult for me but i didn't let that stop me it was one of those things where i always had a positive attitude about things i am constantly calling people from different organizations and asking them what is it that i can do i had my dissertation wise a couple of my meetings we were um rescheduled multiple times and that didn't stop me and honest to god again i'm not trying to play the race game but i felt as joe me being black had a lot to do with it. And even when I was going through clinicals, guys, I will, this is when I was doing my doctorate program, I will literally wear a lab coat, a white lab coat, and I'll go in with my preceptors. And there's been times where, because the preceptor would introduce you, hey, this is a, a nursing student, um, they'll be shadowing me today. And I've had people make comments about, oh, good for you. Are you going for your LPN? It's like, again, there's nothing wrong with being an LPN, but it's usually they feel as though you can only amount to being an LPN. And to me, it was like, okay, well, you could just ask me, what are you going to school for? And and it was one of those things. It was like, I, sometimes I have to correct them. No, I'm going for my doctorate. Uh, thank you very much. And then you get comments like, Oh, you've done very well for yourself. You people have done good for yourself. It's like, I, I get that I had a lot of that those comments when I was working as a registered nurse. I will literally show up at the bedside and say, hey, guy, um, I will introduce myself to the patient. Hey, so, so, and so, my name is Ami. I'm going to be the nurse working, for, working with you today. And you get this shock look in their face, like, you're, you're going to be my nurse, not my CNA, or something like that. So it's like one of those things where people feel as though because of the color of your skin, or because you have an accent, you can't amount to anything more than a CNA or anything more than an LPN. And don't get me wrong, there's nothing be wrong with being a CNA. I started off as a CNA before I went back to school and got my RN. But it's just that notion that people always have their own negative perception of you. And you can't let that stop you guys. You got to keep pushing. It may be something where somebody, it's easier for them and you are doing the same exact thing. And it is a lot more difficult for you to accomplish that just because of major obstacles that you have to go through. You can't let that stop you guys. You got to keep pushing. And I know this video is a little bit long, but I wanted to really highlight some of the things that I've experienced personally. And hopefully these experience, these things are able to help you if you're going through any obstacles, whether it's nursing related, school related, family wise, or sometimes you may have family members or people that may not necessarily be positive or say positive things about you or positive things about your journey. Don't let that stop. You guys just keep it pushing. You're going to be fine. As long as you believe in yourself, that's one of the most important thing. If someone else believes in you, that should just be a plus, but always believe in yourself and your goals and be willing to put in the hard work and you will make it. And again, I am a leaving testimony to that. And those are things that I still go through today. There are some times where some patients where I introduce myself, hi, my name is such and such. I'm going to be the provider working with you today. And they just are shocked, you know, like they don't, they're not expecting a black person or they're not expecting someone to have an accent. And it's just amazing how as the visit progress and your, my attitude and just the way how I deal with people in general, they start to warm up with, uh, with you and, and just be more open to you. And where all of a sudden your accent doesn't matter anymore. Your, the color of your skin doesn't seem to matter anymore. And you develop this really good relationship with that person. So if I can give you one good advice, that would be that believe in your dreams, be willing to put in the hard work and don't let anyone's negative opinion affect you and just be and just have a positive attitude and doesn't matter how people treat you 
you treat them the way that you want to be treated and a lot of the time when people have those negative opinions about you or those negative thoughts once they meet you and realize what great person that you are a lot of the time they ended up dropping all of those negative feelings or perception and stuff that they have about you and that's pretty much it for this video until next time guys stay positive be kind to one another and i'll see you guys on my next video bye guys